Let me, let me go out there. Is this thing on? Make sure it... Hello, moviegoers, and welcome to another episode of Critic Hardware, the show where I turn you into a cinephile. As you've noticed, today we've got a special guest. Everybody, this is Chris. I'm special? Yes, Thank you're very you. special. Appreciate that. And Chris is here to help me review the new film Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, directed by Thomas Alfredson, co-written by Bridget O'Connor and Peter Strahan, and starring Gary Oldman, Toby Jones, Colin Firth, John Hurt, Tom Hardy, Mark Strong, Karen Hines, and Bob Cumberbatch. And Benedict Cumberbatch. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. This film tells the story of a high-ranking official in the British intelligence who learns that one of his own is a mole for the Russians, and he must find out which of his own crew has betrayed him. As I often do, start out at the top of this review by reading off the cast. And I gotta say, this film is filled with talented people. You know, whenever I would tell somebody, oh hey, I'm gonna go see Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, I'd say, this has all the great British actors right now, except for Daniel Day-Lewis, because he's off he was off busy shooting, you know, Abraham Lincoln. And Daniel Craig. Okay, yeah, Daniel Craig. But we we talked about him a couple weeks ago. He was he was out in Sweden when they were doing this. Yes. The film has a, a ton of great British actors in it. No one's going to disagree on that. And they all give really good performances, especially Gary Oldman. If it weren't for Gary Oldman's presence in this movie... I think I would have hated this movie if Gary Oldman wasn't in it. Yeah, okay. Let's go with that. Yes. If it weren't for Gary Oldman, we would have hated this movie. Because, even though it's only about two hours long, it's a very long two hours. I don't agree with that. Really? Really. Mm. He doesn't agree with that. Well, okay. but the, the first half of the film is very, very slow. I'll give you that one. And the second half of the film, when things do actually start happening, it's very disjointed and jumbled. And I didn't really care for that because it made things hard to follow. You know, I literally had no idea what was going on during most of this movie. And it's not like this is, you know, the tree of life, where, you know, you're watching space happen and dinosaurs and then they jump to a family in the 50s. You know, this is, guy has to track down the, the Soviet mole amongst the British intelligence. That shouldn't be too bad. The film opens with a scene that, at least to me, leads you to believe the main guy in the scene gets shot. And dies. And done. Right. Yeah, I just... He was bleeding out. Yeah. He shot on the ground, bleeding out. So he he looks pretty dead, considering everyone's freaking out. It's like, oh, they, we were supposed to take him alive. And then he's in the rest of the movie. Because I, I thought that they were just jumping around in the timeline. Because there there's another character who they reference being dead in later scenes in the movie, but then they show scenes where that, that he's in. So you know they're at least having some... They're at least taking a few liberties with the timeline, and I just figured his scenes were also examples of that. But then you have Gary Oldman's character in scenes with this guy who seemed to be very dead in the beginning of the film. So then you know, oh, well obviously he didn't actually die. Aside from the main storyline of Gary Oldman's character trying to find the Russian mole, you had this secondary thing going on with Tom Hardy's character where he was abroad doing the, you know, secret spy thing for England and he met this girl and they had to go back and get the girl, but then the girl's story also interacts with the dead guy, with the not really dead guy's story. It was all, it was, it was a big mishmash and... Time. He was the guy from Star Trek Nemesis. I have never seen Star Trek Nemesis, actually. Okay, I, I think, would call it, I think most people would call him that guy from Inception, or that guy who's going to be in The Dark Knight Rises coming up this summer. What a fine film that's going to be. Again, I don't really know what his character was doing in this movie, but he, ever, like I said, they're a bunch of good actors. They all did a really good job. I don't really know how they all were supposed to come together, but <laughs> the opinions of Chris do not reflect Credit Carter or anyone else related to this channel. See, I don't hate this movie as much as you hated it. Yeah, I didn't say I hated the movie. I said Gary Oldman saves it, makes it remotely worthwhile. I, I give it okay. It's because the, the film shot very well, and the director obviously knows what he's doing. He also get, he was the, he's the same guy who gave us Let the Right One In, uh, the Swedish vampire film from a few years back which was remade for American audiences to moderate success. And this is his English language debut. I think if they had just picked up the, the pace of the film a little bit and they had made it a linear picture instead of having it be as jumbled as it was, it would have come out a lot better. But, but Gary Oldman gives a very strong performance. Now this is going to be one of those rare examples where I break with the herd as far as the... That's a good analogy. Yeah, I'm breaking with the herd as far as the vast majority of the critics go. I heard that one. As of today, Rotten Tomatoes has this at, with an 80... I hope I'm getting this right. An 86%. That's right. Yeah. Okay, 86%. Which means, let's say, only 100 people have reviewed this film. 
14 of them agree with me and say it was bad. And the other 86 said it was good. And I'm seeing this on a lot of people's year-end, you know, top year -end. I say year-end because it, it had a limited release in 2011, but it's just now coming to the wide, uh, the wide release. A lot of people put this on their top 10 for the year of 2011. I wouldn't put it anywhere close to that. I just, you know, maybe, maybe it's just not my thing. Obviously there are people out there who like it. But you can't please everybody all the time, you know, unless you're, unless you're Pixar. And even then you mess up because you made the cars too, so. Good job on that one. At the end of the day, I want to give this a big old two out of five British intelligence agents. Well, a lot of what you said, I kind of agree with and I kind of don't. Okay. For example, I didn't think it was a boring movie. I had to fight to stay awake in the first half hour of the film. To me, this is what, this was one of those movies where you have to kind of see it a second time to get what's going on. But I would never go, go and see it a second time. Well, then obviously they failed. For like, I think a lot of the actors look the same. Um, and that's what kind of confused me. For example, the mole. The guy who was the mole. Yes. I thought <laughs> was like, he looked just like another guy. Unless it was the same guy, and I'm really confused. I mean, he's had a very distinctive role recently, so I don't know how you would how you would be mixing him up with anyone else in that cast, but that's just me. I am, I'm an admitted film junkie. I know this guy compared to... Too. You know, I was relatively familiar with everybody in this cast, even the you know, those last two names that we had to struggle a bit with, because they're only known more to the, the British audience. But After all that, I'm going to give this movie... I'm not going to give it a two out of five. Okay. I'll probably give it like a three and a half-ish. Really? Three, three and a half? Probably a three. Let's go with okay. a three. A three... Um, so we got, we got a two and a three, so two and a half between the two of us. Do I have to give, give it like a name? Like you give them British spies. Well, I mean, that's just because we put up that nice little picture from the movie, you know. So instead of just doing stars, and we can't do thumbs up, thumbs down, because that's kind of give it three so. big <laughs> You can give it three big bleeps, because that's what we're going to have to do to, to, this, to this video when it's being edited. Touche. Okay. That's Chris, everybody. He adds a little, a little color to the proceedings. You can find my most recent review of The Artist up over here. Chris, can you tell them where they can find my next review? Right here. And over there, you can find my next review, which will be of the new film The Iron Lady, in which Meryl Streep plays Margaret Thatcher, the first female Prime Minister of England. So another wonderful, historic British film. I know you guys just love those. Make sure to give give me a big old thumbs up if you like this video. I'll give me your infection. Comment um, if you're uh, if you've read the books. Let me know what you thought of the adaptation, because you know, again, I haven't. I can't really speak to. to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, give me a big old thumbs up if you like this video. Favorite, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Fade to white. You, no, you ruined it. These Fade. are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> it's a good movie reference. That's not how we do right, things here. Go, yeah, here. Okay. Fade to black.